Steiner II LASIK Speculum. This speculum has been designed with several features in mind. The blades are deep enough to keep the lashes and the skin away from the field and in most patients also gives a good opening adequate for most microkeratomes. I then use the marker. This marker has a crosshair to center on the pupil and if you wish you can ink 360 degrees. The marks are oriented in such a fashion that if you did get a free cap you would know exactly which side was exterior and exactly how to orient it. At the hinge area where the handle of the marker is there are no ink marks. The marks are more closely spaced opposite where the hinge is located. And this is the Moria CB ring. You can see how it sits in nicely between the blades of the speculum. Press down and get suction. Once suction is established you'll see how I can lift it up and rotate it to maximally expose the sides of the ring so that there will be no impedance to the traversing of the Moria head from the lid speculum. My preference is to check the pressure with the pneumotonometer. This is again the Moria CB head and you can see how it slips past the cutouts on the blades of the speculum so that you can accomplish the traversing arc. Now if you have a nasal hinge speculum this works just as well. Uh, the cutouts provide passageways for the microkeratome ring and the microkeratome. I'm measuring now the thickness with a pachymeter. The curve of the blades of the speculum is different than cataract instruments because you can see that they are curved to exactly match the curvature of the exterior of the ring used in virtually all microkeratomes. And the flap has been lifted out of place with the spatula. The thin end of the spatula is used to manipulate the flap. It lifted it up earlier. Now you can see it's sitting it back down and you see the good alignment of those marks. Now we're going to see the speculum inserted once again. This is a tighter orbit, smaller palpebral fissure. And what I do here is slowly advance the opening of the speculum and let the patient start to relax. And you'll see this one is pretty tight, but we're able to accomplish it anyway. Now, in most cases, I don't do 360 degree ink marks. They're not necessary. I have confidence that I'm going to have a good hinge. So I just ink a small amount of the marker in the periphery. But if you have any issue about centration as well as possible free cap, then inking 360 degrees is nice because you know exactly where the ring is going to sit relative to the pupil. Now here, in order to gain access to the orbit, I've rotated the ring counterclockwise and now I lift up and rotate it clockwise. And again, you can see the curvature of the speculum blades matches the curvature of the suction ring. And again, because of the cutouts, you can slip in the head of the microkeratome without fear of catching lashes or skin. So we seat the microkeratome and advance it once again. Now this is the other speculum I designed. This does not have the cutouts and the blades are shallower. This is designed for the occasional patient whose bony orbit is so tight that a standard speculum blade causes pressure and pain when you expand it fully. You have to guard against the more shallow blade here, allowing the lids to come out and around, but with a little downward pressure in most cases, this will hold the lids adequately. Now this happens to be an enhancement case. Uh, at the slit lamp, preoperatively, I've opened up about one clock hour with the jeweler's forcep. This is the other end of the spatula. This is the end with the broad blade. And this blade is semi-sharp. It's very helpful in cleaving the epithelium as cleanly as possible when lifting the flap for these enhancement cases. And now the other end of the spatula, the thin end, is used to free up and flip over the flap. Now another use for the broad end of the spatula is to provide hinge protection in the case of a wide 
ablation that could potentially put laser pulses onto the hinge. Now with higher magnification, another enhancement case. And again, you can see how that blade is sharp enough to cleave the epithelium in a fairly clean fashion and yet respect the original cut of the microkeratome and not create any new passages. And again, the thin end is able to get in with the beveled end and then pass underneath and free up the adhesions between the flap and the underlying bed. We're next going to illustrate the suction stabilizer. This attaches to the suction device of the microkeratome and is used in the occasional patient who simply can't stay steady enough, uh, usually a Bell's phenomenon or just anxiety. And it's important for the surgeon to find a way to stabilize the surgeon's hand. Uh, I usually try to make contact with the blade of the lid speculum. And then with the tracker on especially, uh, there's really no difficulty with obtaining adequate stabilization and avoiding the uh, rolling eye phenomenon that will defeat even the best of trackers. This keeps movements down to a minimum, as you can see. You can use low suction if your microkeratome vacuum gives you a low suction option, but most of the time you just use full vacuum the same as you would for the microkeratome ring adhesion. Depending upon the position of the eye in the orbit, you can put the suction stabilizer superiorly or inferiorly, as is shown here. Again, you see the broad end of the spatula protecting the hinge as the laser exposure gets out to the periphery. Patients do not feel any discomfort from the suction stabilizer. You can see the impression that that's made on the conjunctiva. That disappears in a matter of minutes. In this case though, I'm going to show that occasionally you do get subconjunctival hemorrhages from the suction. Uh, if possible, it's good to have the, su the suction stabilizer in a location where that would be covered by the lids, either above or below. One final use of the broad end of the spatula is to remove epithelial ingrowth. You can see that there's epithelial ingrowth on the left side of the picture here, and the semi-sharp edge of that spatula makes a nice blade that will not cut or damage the flap or the bed, but yet is sharp enough to clean off some peripheral epithelial ingrowth that has occurred here. You can see that I'm using it to push the epithelium off the bed and out to the periphery so that in this uh, patient who then underwent an enhancement there is no recurrence of the epithelial ingrowth.